Yes. Hello everyone, I'm Father Aaron. Welcome to The Dungeon Minister. So this episode is an intercalary chapter. You know what an intercalary chapter is. Of course you do. You had to read Grapes of Wrath in high school, too. An intercalary chapter is a chapter in a book that doesn't involve the main plot line or the main characters, but is rather a poetic reflection upon the plot line and the characters. So in Grapes of Wrath, the turtle crossing the road. It faces obstacles on the way across, it carries its home on its back, and is therefore a metaphor for the Jodes, as they, having pulled up their whole home and bringing all of their possessions with them, cross the country. Anyhow, intercalary chapter. So this doesn't have to do with a continuation of the mysterious Mr. B plotline, it is rather about the piece of terrain which I made for that episode, this. And I'm sharing it because... I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I'm pretty proud of it. It's not my own design. I got the idea from Black Magic Craft, and I'll link to that video down below. I also am not going to go through every step of how I built this. It took me weeks, if not months. I have to do this while my boys are in bed, right? I, I wanted it to be a surprise to them, so I couldn't, you know, let them see it which meant I had to wait till they were in bed to start making it, and I only had, you know, a couple hours at night before I started to poop out and had to go to bed myself. So it took me a long time. If you want to make one for yourself or just see how it was made, look in uh, the description below. You'll find a link to Black Magic Craft's video, and, and you can see uh, how he made it. I can tell you this much. It's made of layers of foam core, the kind that you can peel the paper off of, so... My apologies to anyone outside of North America. That'll be harder to find. But um, that's what it's made out of, and it's just stacked up. And you cut it out in a sort of a keyhole. Never mind. You can look at the video. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler alert. If you watched The Mysterious Mr. B Part 1 and you're waiting for Part 2, be aware this video will contain some spoilers. Not massive spoilers. Small spoilers. But spoilers nonetheless. So, if you want the whole thing to be a surprise, if you want to know nothing beforehand, skip this video for now, come back and watch it after you've watched The Mysterious Mr. B Part 2. Okay, you've been warned. On with the video. I do want to tell you about the changes that I made to Jeremy's design, because there's some things, some adaptations that I made that uh, make it unique. Probably the most obvious being the horns on the top of the tower. Obviously inspired by Orthanc, I thought it made it look more wizardy. Now, in retrospect, I do wish that I'd done it a bit differently. These are glued on. I, I cut out the little, um, you know, stair step here. I cut out the little bricks for that and the horns. The horns were actually left over from scrap from having cut out the circles. Anyway, now I glued the horns on. I wish I'd done it differently. I wish that I had embedded magnets in the top piece and then another magnet or a piece of metal or whatever into each of the horns. That way I could remove them and it would be more flexible. As it is, this top piece has to be the top piece. Obviously, you can't put another one on top of it. Um, and if you want a tower that doesn't have this, you, you have a shorter tower. Now, I could make another level. These are really, it's one sheet of foam core to make them. Um, I could make another level and have a different top, but it would have been easier if I could have just taken those off. And then I also could have designed like a, a parapet, you know, a crenellated parapet that I could plop on there as well. I could, I could switch out what the top looked like, but oh well, I did what I did, and there it is. Another change I made, which I thought was pretty cool, was down at the base. It's a little harder to see for you here. Um, I'll show pictures of this as well, because I think seeing it on camera is a little hard. But the bottom layer actually has um, a flat base on it, or a nearly flat. It does have the beginnings of the stairs on there. I did this because I wanted there to be a ground floor. As designed, um, the thing would just would just sit direct on the table, and the first accessible floor would be under the, uh, uh, the, the first, or on top of the first layer. But I wanted there to be a little more um, room. I wanted another floor. I wanted there to be a ground floor, and I wanted there to be an entrance, too. 
Now that doorway is not nearly tall enough for a mini to fit inside of, but it gives an indication of where the door is. It doesn't have to. I mean, it only goes in. All I did is carve in about half an inch, three quarters of an inch into the foam there and then painted the inside black. But I thought that was one change that helped. It made it um, more of a place and you could put it on the table either with other terrain or the way I did on just a grid on the table with uh, you know dry erase marker uh, lines for you know where the trees are and all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, I thought that was a good change. Another change I wish I had made. Um, on one of the floors of this tower in the adventure that I made, there's a maze, and I'll show you how I did that. But I wanted to send the characters through the maze. I didn't want them to have the option of skipping it. I know that's kind of railroady, but there's sort of a mini-boss on the way that prepares them for a later fight. So and I wanted them to have to face it, essentially. I wanted that to be something that they, they encountered. Now, as it happens, they did. Sorry to spoil the adventure there. But I wanted that to be something that they, they had to get through. And one way to do that would be, and also I think just to make a, a, a variety in the design, is you see how it's designed in these sort of uh, keyhole shapes stacked, slightly turned every level, right, to make the, the staircase. It would have been neat if I had taken the top layer and made two keyhole projections, one to this side and maybe one over here, so that the steps stop. And then there's a gap. And maybe they would have the opportunity, they'd have the option of jumping the gap or trying to bridge it somehow. That would be one challenge they could have. Or they could go through that floor. But at any rate, as I say, they, they went through the, the maze anyhow and it all worked out lovely. I just thought that might be another feature I could have added that would have been kind of neat. And if I make any more layers for it, and that's a great thing. Like if you want a taller tower, make more layers, right? So I probably will in the future make more, including a, a more... Um, customizable top and I can make it taller and taller and I'll probably add in one of those um, you know one one way only levels. Anyhow the genius of it I think that, that, that Jeremy came up with in this design is the modular nature of it. You could just do one of these for your table to make a tower and then every time they go up the stairs you just change the furniture. It's neater if you can do two because when they go up you take you know whatever's on there you take the minis off you put another layer on and they go up the stairs. And you can play adventures on the stairs. We had a fight on the stairs. Again, sorry for the spoiler. So we had a fight on the stairs that happened, which is neat. Which would be hard to do if you just had the one. But the great thing about the design, being modular, you can make it however you want to, right? And as you go up, you can change. Like I've got a stone... It's hard to see here. Again, I'll show a picture. i got a stone pattern on the top with a design which becomes important for the adventure. But then on other floors, there's a wood grain floor, right? And then a different stone floor there. So it changes as they go up, and it changes the character of the room. So as they go through the thing, it's, you know, it's not carbon copy. It's not cookie cutter. Um, they do, there is some uniqueness to each level. Anyhow, the other thing you do, obviously, to make it unique is what you put in each level. And I do want to give some credit where credit is due to the people who helped inspire me. So let me show you that. On the top is the orb that you can ponder. If you want to ponder the orb, this is the orb you ponder. Now, it doesn't show up with all the light on and things like that, but um, in person it does, but I don't think it really shows up on camera too well. Um, this actually has a tea light, one of those little electronic tea lights inside of it, and so it lights up a little bit. It glows and flickers. Now, the orb itself I've had since I was a kid, like a teenager, I'm sure I got it when I was into D&D &D as a teen, and because it looks kind of magical, and I've just had it ever since. Anyhow, the base that the orb sits on is simply made out of layers of foam core, um, cut as rings with a hole in the middle that fits the uh, electric tea light. I cut the sort of rubbery plastic flame off the top of the electric tea light uh, so that it would fit inside and also so the light would be brighter. The technique for finishing the outside of the base came from Scattercraft, uh, a channel here on YouTube. I'll link to it. He does great stuff. He hasn't done any videos for a while. He moved houses and so he didn't have his workshop set up and, and I don't know if life just got too complicated after that or he got busy or, or, or what happened. Or maybe he doesn't have a workshop in his new home. At any rate, he hasn't made any videos for a while 
But he has enough stuff you could happily spend an evening watching it, and if it's new to you, then it's all new. He has a technique which makes this sort of volcanic rock look. Now, he got it from someone else, and I think he credits it in his video, but I got it from him, so I'll credit him. The technique is simplicity itself. He uses the tip of a hot glue gun to melt the foam. Now, I have to say, don't do too much of this at once, because the fumes do start to build up, but this is a small piece, so it didn't matter. Using that hot tip, the, the foam just melts away and you can carve it, and it leaves, as you can see, it leaves this sort of volcanic rock look behind. If you paint it dark and then put some Mod Podge over it to get the sort of sheen, it looks a bit like obsidian or some sort of volcanic glass rock. Then I just drizzled some hot glue on it and painted the hot glue drips uh, gold. Why? I don't know. It's just to look cool. But obviously, that can't be the only thing in the tower, so what else did I make? For this, I'm going to go to the still pictures. On the ground floor, there is a throne room. The magic user, whose tower this is, considers himself very important. Now, I have since seen way cooler thrones. Battle and Barrow did one up on a dais, and I do wish I had thought to put some at least one level of dais underneath this thing. But anyhow, here it is. There were also two statues in this room, and I could not find any minis that were suitable. Um, there were just no minis that looked like a good... What I wanted was this. I wanted that Arthur statue, or something very similar to it. I wanted a knight standing, hands folded on top of a sword sort of look. But I couldn't find anything that even closely resembled it in any of the shops around. So I ended up making a couple of them out of foam, but they were barely passable, so I'm not showing those off. On the next level, we find the wizard's study and the furniture that I made. Now, I got the idea for this, oh, partly from Battle and Barrow, partly from um, Black Magic Craft, partly from uh, Wylock. I think it's Wylock is his name. Um, so I got ideas from various places, and some of it was just common sense and how to do stuff and how to make things. So the wizard's study with the shelf and a couple of tables, and there's lovely little details, like on the tables there's piles of paper, and they even have little scribblings on the paper and things. Beads used as jars and bottles and candle stands and things like that. And then on the shelf, rolled up scrolls, and on the bottom shelf, uh, a, a row of books. These are just foam core, obviously, with the painted back on them. But I thought those things all looked pretty cool. There's also a treasure chest, which ends up being important, but I won't spoil that part. On the next level was the maze, and all I made for the maze were these. Little sections of wall to indicate the beginning of the maze, because the maze was in sort of an extra-dimensional space, and so it, it, it extended well beyond the footprint of the tower. Well, clearly I can't do that in the tower, because this isn't actually an extra-dimensional tower. So I used just a printed map, that uh, I kept track of, and then the players were keeping track of the maze on a dry erase uh, mat, a battle mat on the table. So they were drawing it as they went, and I was helping them to, to get the right intersections and whatnot. But to begin with, I just had the first couple of walls of the maze laid down on the tower itself. Now, even a wicked wizard needs a place to sleep, so the next level was the wizard's bedroom. Here I used one of the tables from the level below. I'm not going to make separate tables for different levels of the tower. I'll just reuse a table. I also, of course, made a wardrobe because wizard's robes have to hang somewhere. There's another treasure chest up here, which, again, is just the treasure chest from below, repeated, just brought up a level. And the bed. I really like the bed, although I didn't do the best job on it. I wish I had rounded the corners of the bed itself so that they didn't look quite so square. But I got the idea from Battle and Barrow. He has an excellent tutorial and he does a much better job with his. But it's very simple. It's just foam, some chipboard, and toilet paper, of all things. So check that video out. It's also linked in the description below for how he made the bed. After that, it's the top of the tower and the big boss fight up at the top. Of course, the big boss fight always happens on the top of the tower. So, there it is, the tower. This was actually the first piece of terrain I ever made. Even the little tiles that I used a couple of adventures ago, uh, the, the Bandit's adventure, 
even those I made after I had started this. Again, it took me weeks and weeks and weeks. We don't normally play with terrain, partly because I didn't when I was a kid. It just wasn't done that much. Partly because, well, frankly, we've got five people living in a relatively modestly sized house. If I was making this every week, we'd have no room to live. But I do find playing, especially with the youngest, our, our youngest is seven years old. He was six when we started. Um, playing with kids that young, I find it helps to have a thing on the table for them to focus on. Especially, again, the seven-year-old. He'll tend to wander, right? If it's just theater of the mind, he tends to wander a bit. So this really galvanized him. That really brought his attention to the table. I also, to be frank, wanted to cause a bit of a stir. So we're going through the adventure, and I've got, again, I have a battle mat on the table, and I'm drawing with, uh, with dry erase, showing where the, the tree line is, and there's a clearing in the trees, and there stands a tower. So what I did is I had this thing in a box. I had it on a sheet of cardboard with the box over top of it, right? And so I bring that and I set it on the table. And they think, oh, this box is the tower. He's just showing us how big the tower is. This is the tower, right? This is terrain from Papa, right? He's showing us the tower. <laughs> no, because then I slid out the cardboard and lifted the box and their eyes went like saucers. It was beautiful. They are like, cool, you know, which is exactly the reaction you want when you put a big piece of terrain out, right? So they really loved it. They had a great time playing the way, their way up the tower and everything. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It's still nothing that I'm going to do every week for every adventure. We, we, we just don't have room to keep it all afterward. Um, and making it again, I have to make it at night so that, uh, you know, they don't see it getting made, if I want to surprise them at least. So it's just not worth the hassle on a regular basis. But for big set pieces, it's kind of neat to be able to bring something like this out. Anyhow, now you've met the tower and you've seen some of the contents of the tower, you can look for it in the next installment of The Mysterious Mr. B. <laughs>